Hi, I'm Dana and today I wanted to talk about telling your family you're autistic and what my family's reactions were sort of like and how it was for me. Because I've talked before about coming out as autistic to people and I'm going to talk about it more because I think I've gotten better at making videos since I last talked about it. But it was a really big and stressful thing for me and I don't feel like it's something we talk about all that much in the autistic community. But I found it like extremely, extremely difficult to tell the people that I knew the best that I was autistic. And it's also something I especially want to talk about because my oldest brother was diagnosed autistic in childhood and I've increasingly seen more people that had quite a similar situation in childhood to what I had growing up where you're sort of left to the side and ignored a bit because somebody else in the family's diagnosed. And I think it's just good to talk about and I only ever want to talk about my own experiences and the like and that's my experience. I don't want this intro to be like super long but I'm not an educator, like I'm very much just talking about and sharing my experiences for the autistic people to feel better, you know? So yeah, getting into the bones of the actual video here, I had to tell my mother first because I'd gone to my GP and been like, hi, I think I'm autistic, and he was like, okay, we'll put you on the referral, and then I waited like almost two years, and then I got the letter through saying that I needed to bring someone who had known me like my entire life kind of thing, and my only option was my mother. So I was like, fuck, I've got to tell my mum, hi, I'm trying to be diagnosed autistic and I need you to come and tell them all the reasons that you think I might be autistic, even though you don't seem to think I might be autistic. <laughs> like, I really thought she was going to tell me to stop being silly, to be honest with you. But she was like, oh, okay, yeah, let's do that. And I think it's largely because she'd driven me to so many mental health appointments and the like that it was just another psychiatry doctor's thing for a daughter's mental health, you know? I don't think she took it all that seriously. And my family's the type where once my mother knows something, so does everybody else. She she insists that's not the case, but it very, very much is. So I was sort of like, okay, I'm going to have to start telling people, like, the moment I get my diagnosis kind of thing. Because otherwise everyone's just going to know and I'm not going to be the one that's told them, you know? It was only at the end of the diagnosis process when he, like, gave me the paperwork and was like, yeah, you are autistic, that my mum was kind of like, wait what's just gone on here and it's like you you just described all of the autistic traits of my entire life to a man who said that I am definitely autistic because of all the autistic traits that I've been showing my entire life. <laughs> she seemed quite confused and put off by it to be honest and she seemed very confused as to how anything she had said had caused him to think that I would be autistic because I, I didn't do an awful lot of talking during the whole like session that we had it was mostly him and my mum talking about me as a baby and a child more than anything. So it, she definitely seemed to think it was like her fault that I'd been diagnosed and that definitely made it... If she hadn't been involved and I'd just like gone off on my own and come back and been like, hi, I've gotten an autism diagnosis, I don't think she'd have taken it at all seriously. I don't think that like there would have been any sort of anything about that, you know? Like I don't think it would have been thought about again. But because she was a part of the process and it was things that she had said that played into it, it was very serious to her. And yet, very quickly afterwards, she began pointing out things that were obvious autistic traits, you know? And almost like, because she was part of the diagnosis process, she wanted to pretend she'd been in it all along and had like always known, and that was a little bit odd. But the main thing that I want to focus on was the faux acceptance, and the thing of like, oh yeah, you're autistic, but you're still you, aren't you? You know, even though I was telling like family members, like my brothers and my aunts and whoever else that I was autistic, they all had very much the same reaction of like, yeah, but you've got a miss farm. It's you're still just you, you know, aren't you? And like I say, it was complete faux acceptance because they were pretending they accepted me as an autistic person, but they didn't. They accepted me as the person that they'd always assumed and hoped and imagined I was. And the impression that they'd been given from me masking to them all for my entire life. So as much as they had the knowledge that I was autistic and they still loved me as a family member, but the fact that I was autistic didn't really process or sink in. You know, they weren't accepting that I was autistic. They were just pretending it wasn't a thing. They were just accepting that if I'd always been that way, then nothing would need to change and nothing would need to be different because it's just Dana. There might be a new word to describe her, but it's still just Dana. And that meant that as I unmasked more and figured myself out more and tried to accommodate to myself more, they started to get very annoyed, honestly. You know, I got a lot of the, like, you're acting more autistic now, you're pretending to be more autistic now. And I still have a lot of things that I very, very much mask and, like, repress because it's not stuff that I outwardly presented us before. 
So I feel like I am almost pretending to be more autistic when I do it, even though, you know, that's how I feel, that's how I am, that's me as an autistic person. My first, like, attempts to unmask and to be myself were very much met with the resistance of, like, what are you doing? You've never been... Like, the first summer after I'd been diagnosed, I went to my mum's wearing sunglasses because the sun was too bright. And she was like, why are you wearing sunglasses? You've never worn sunglasses before. And I don't wear sunglasses because having the rim around my eyes gives me a headache and makes me, like, feel... It's a sensory issue. Wearing sunglasses is a sensory issue, so that can't accommodate to the sensory issue of things being too bright. And then on top of that, I was just made to feel silly and stupid and like I was putting something on and pretending, even though it was me taking off the layers of putting things on and pretending. So even though there was this like fake acceptance of like, we love you as you are, once I was actually being as I am, it wasn't so easy and impressive for them anymore. And that also meant that I was like repeatedly asking for accommodations and for like Honestly, with the way that my family are, I was trying to set some like perfectly acceptable boundaries sometimes and I was offered just no acceptance, no accommodation, no understanding of why I needed these things. It was just, we know who you are, you've always been who you are, you still are who you are, stop pretending to be something you're not. However, obviously this is coming from someone with quite a difficult family dynamic. So as much as they got really annoyed by some of my autistic traits and really annoyed by some parts of me being an autistic person, they very quickly figured out that they could latch onto and try to use other autistic traits against me, which really fucking sucked. Like I've talked about before that one of the big things that led up to me just cutting off my mother was that I was going to see her every single day. And my relationship with my mother was obviously quite difficult and it was exhausting to go and see her for an hour or two every day and then she started to get annoyed at me when I didn't go every day and then that was when we started to get to like but you're autistic so you need routine so every day needs to be the same for you so you really should be coming to see us every day if you're autistic or I'd be invited round with the specific thing of like my sp safe food being available there. My mother had gone out and specifically bought and cooked me a favourite meal that like I would consider a safe food that she knows I really enjoy it. And I go up and I'm eating and it turns out that I've been lured there so they can ask me about something else that they want me to do. You know, any time that I thought maybe I was being accommodated to or being understood, it always turned out to have an ulterior motive behind it to try and get me to do something for them or try and get me to try and get me to do something for them, that was what I constantly, constantly did. And as my family more so sort of processed the fact that I'd always been autistic and started to like, sort of have it more, I suppose it's like something that they actually tied to me rather than something that came as an afterthought. That was when they started really like hammering down on like, oh well you've always been like this and that's very obviously autistic isn't it? Oh and this thing that you used to do as a kid, that was autism wasn't it? And it was this thing of, there were so many times that I would be sat there and they'd all, be, like, and by them all, I mean, like, my mum and my two brothers would be talking about various things that I did in childhood that I didn't even remember that were very, very, very obvious autistic traits. And that, as I said, my oldest brother is autistic and was diagnosed as a child, so they should have been aware of this stuff. And it seems like they are, so considering they would sit there and point it out. So I'd sit there and be like, you're not surprised by being, being autistic. You're not shocked. You, you seem to have been able to like put it all together and work it out pretty damn easily. So why was I just left? You know? And that's that's a whole different video topic right there. But that was what really started to like lead into like a lot of the resentment towards my family and a lot of like, so you saw me struggling, you watched me struggle, you noticed what I was struggling with and just did nothing? So I'd already had a strained relationship with my family, that made it get progressively worse and one of the big, one of the autism related things that came towards the end of my relationship with my family was the extreme difference between how my brother and I was still being treated. I have a lot of issues with my brother, I have a lot of issues with the way that he behaves, things that he has done. I don't think he's a good person and I don't think he tries to be a good person frankly. So I, I have issues with him and I've always, always been brushed off about that and it wouldn't bother me so much but I don't bring it up, you know, I'm not sat there like, 
let's talk about how much I hate my brother. It'd be everyone else who's talking about him. I'd just be sat there minding my own business because I don't want to talk about him. And then someone would be like, what do you think, Dana? And I'd be like, well, here's what I think now that you've asked. And then suddenly I'm the bitch. But my brother's also the type that grew up being able to blame things on his autism and him being autistic and be like, oh, well, it's not my fault. And has continued to do that far, far into adulthood. So even as a diagnosed autistic adult, I would be asked to do things for him and I would be like, no, I'm not doing that. I don't like him. I don't have a relationship with him. I don't want a relationship with him. I don't want anything to do with this man. And I'd be told, oh, come on though. You know, he's, he's a bit vulnerable, isn't he? Okay. Like, I don't have a relationship with him. Like, a random vulnerable person, I'm sorry, is not my issue. Yeah, like, if he was, like, in the street, yeah, I will help. He's not, though, is he? You know, if there's a random vulnerable person that needs help in the street, I will reach out and try and help them. But if it's someone that I know is an asshole who is going, oh, please help me, I'm too lazy to do it myself, I'm not helping. But it'd be turned around and I would be, like, they would try and make me feel bad for not helping this poor autistic man. And it's like, I'm also autistic. Why are you trying to manipulate me into helping someone I don't want to help? Why are you trying to manipulate the poor autistic girl? But it was never ever seen like that. And there were times that, as I've said in past videos, he was physically abusive to me as a child and got away with it. And as an adult, he knew he wouldn't get away with it. I would have phoned the police and I would have had great joy in it as well. So he would just say horrible things to me sometimes. And obviously when someone says something awful to you, you react. So I would. And then my mum would be like, oh damn, don't. You know he's autistic. You know this. You know that. And I'd be like, bitch. <laughs> you know, like, I knew that my entire family dynamic wasn't going to change because I'd been diagnosed. But having spent years being told to not wind up your brother, he's autistic. To then be sat there, having him very obviously intentionally winding me up and still being told like, oh, well, don't rise to it, he's autistic, when I am also autistic. You know, like, I don't want to use my autism as some like little special thing to make people be nice to me. But if it's going to be used against me to try and make me be nice to someone else, I want it used for me as well. <laughs> So I never felt like my family really accepted or understood that I was autistic, honestly. They seemed to be very like, well, she's dealt with it this long, nothing needs to change. When I very, very much did need things to change. And that was why I'd gone and gotten the diagnosis because I was like, I ain't gonna last year much longer if I don't know what's going on. And I just felt consistently dismissed and misunderstood. And I, I don't quite know what word to use. I was going to say discriminated, but I didn't really feel like discriminated against by my family. I just didn't feel taken seriously or respected in any way, you know? And it felt like being autistic was just something they could use as an excuse when they needed to without ever actually taking it into account when I needed them to, you know? And obviously I'm aware that like everybody's family dynamics is different and the way that people react and everything will be different. And, you know, this isn't meant to be like a horror story of don't tell your family you're autistic but I think that I could have really done with being prepared for it because I really thought that it was going to change a lot of things and it would make a lot of things better and I would be more understood and, and feel more part of the family and that people would finally understand that like I'm not aloof and snotty I just don't know how to reach out and it was none of that it was absolutely none of it I, I no <laughs> I realise I haven't really spoken about extended family because I didn't really tell them I mentioned it to my aunt and she had a whole bunch of different mental health stuff so she just stuck it under her belt and was like, you're a fair news. Like, it, yeah. Um, I did have my cousin comment on one of my TikToks though, which was bizarre. And it was one where I was talking about when people say like, oh, but you don't seem autistic because of this and this. And she'd commented being like, oh, everybody can tell that I'm autistic. Everybody, no one's ever said this to me. And it's like... I'm not sure if she realised who I am because I look very different from the last time I saw her but like honey I have been involved in all of the family conversations where we all talk about how you are definitely bipolar because that's what you've been literally diagnosed with and that's what you show all the traits of. No one's ever said that you're not autistic because no one thinks that you're autistic because you're very very obviously not like it's bizarre. Anyway, that was the video. I'd love to hear about your experiences down below, especially if they're nicer than mine. Always happy to read about your horrible ones as well. I know we need to get them out somewhere sometimes, but it would be especially nice to read 
just one nice fucking thing, okay? I post here on Thursdays and Sundays, so please do subscribe if you want to see more content from me. You can follow me on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter, they'll all be linked down below. You can also become a YouTube member, or you can become a Patreon member, or you can even donate money to me on Ko-fi if you're in a financial position to do so and want to. That's my goblin voice. Um, I hate asking for money, but everybody, money makes the world go round. So if you've got it, be lovely if you want to give me some if you haven't, and it's fine. I, ugh, I hate it every time. It never gets better. That's the one bit. Like, I feel like I've gotten better with, like, please follow me on Instagram and TikTok. The, 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 being like, you can give me money in places if you so choose. Doesn't get less awkward or any easier. But I am going to go now. So whoever you are, wherever you are, if you have a lovely morning, evening, day, afternoon, week, month, year. And I will see you again in a couple of days.